be able to hear us both. Welcome to What's right. Variety Hour. We are your hosts. Hey, host. what's up? I'm Vern. We are your hosts. I'm Nate. We're here. My beard looks especially red today. It does, doesn't it? I was, I was going to say. It's like as it red does. as my fucking thing. I was going to say the red beard. <laughs> Maybe it's... You know how, like, when you wear a shirt, it brings out your eyes if it's a certain color? Ah. Maybe your punching bag is doing that for my beard. Maybe. And we're doing it across distance. Dude, look at that. We're Whoa. doing some sort of quantum entanglement with uh, with photons or something. I, I was thinking, it's, it's something weird. It it's is some something sort of, weird. Like, quantum quantum change there. I'm going to crack open a Truly. I'm going to drink my bitch beer like a man. Okay? <laughs> oh, turn we'll the truly on. the best. <laughs> I'm not sponsored by them, but oh, goddammit, we'll yeah. take it. <laughs> all right boom uh, so how you doing this week man uh, i mean i'm damn. getting there yeah it, me too it has been a long freaking week hold on i'm gonna hit the button and post there you go the um share share <laughs> i'm doing the sherry share sherry share like sherry um no i mean it's been a long freaking week at work i'll tell you what yeah like in the schools it's it's just be so Typically, what I do, um, because I'm an itinerant teacher, I have a caseload instead of a classroom. So I go around and I visit the kids, like, one-on-one, -on -one, you know. But, of course, we're doing this, like, half-and-half -half virtual and in-the-building kind of uh, thing. So I only have – I don't have very many people at all that I'm actually physically going and seeing. Oh. So most of my time is now stuck in an office that is literally drab. Oh, that's the worst. Yeah. you know, Do you know that drab is a color? Oh really? Like like gray? Like the color gray? It's a legitimate. Like that no, it's more gray? like it's more like tan or like Manila. Oh yeah. But a little oh, bit darker. Okay, like that beige, that off beige. Right. So it's like gray, but worse. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. It's literally drab. That's yeah. what my office is. So. I lived, I, I lived in a couple of places like that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't know why they choose to paint walls that color. It's horrible. It's literally like, called what? drab. Like. <laughs> Yeah, it's synonymous with something that's, like, dull and unpleasant. And yet, here we are. <laughs> like... And yet, here we are. <clears throat> but anyway, um, so, yeah, so, like, I'm just doing all kinds of meetings. Like, we're having to do, like, twice as many meetings as we normally would this year because of COVID and everything. We've got extra forms that we have to get filled out and extra paperwork because of a State Department review, like, thing from before. And <laughs> so there's just all this stuff. I feel like an office worker now all of a sudden. Yeah, I'm man. like, bro. That Bro, this like is not what I office for. work. That sounds like what I do. Yeah, dude, yeah, I'm honestly, not into it. It sounds like a lot of that. <clears throat> no, it's awful. It's a lot of nonsense too. I've mm -hmm. noticed. I've mm -hmm. noticed the thing that that I've mostly had issues with since this has started is just like people staying in contact with each other. Like mm. nobody, nobody seems to like be willing to stay near a phone anymore. Because <laughs> like, my job is a lot of people just like reporting in, like, "Hey, I have a problem," and then they just like disappear. <laughs> like, they're just gone, yeah. dude. They're ghosting me. <laughs> if you're out wow. there, I'm finding you. <laughs> I'm gonna fix those <laughs> damn computers. <laughs> you had a problem, and I'm gonna do something about it. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly where I'm at. Yeah, well, I'm getting that way with emails because, like, I have. God, I've sent more emails than like in the past three days than I have in my entire life. Oh, I think. Yeah. Like, Lord. Isn't that the worst? Yeah, I don't have any. It is. It's like and like I'll be staring at my screen all day, and I'm not super used to doing that. Yeah. You know, just looking at my screen all day. Normally, I have a face to look at or a person to talk to or yeah, whatever. Same. same. Actually, that's something that I've um I've started to get really annoyed by because I personally, as an IT guy, like I like to talk to my individuals that I work with. I generally have good mm -hmm. um, customer relationships with them. Like I, I do talk to them and I know about their lives and things. And so when I have to do everything from behind a screen and over the phone, it's like, ugh, not very enjoyable. Yeah, it's just not the same. No, it's not. Yeah, because like when you're in person. I feel like I'm missing that person yeah, like, touch. Right. And like I think when you're in person with someone, it, it's just a different dimension that exists in that space. Sure is. You know? Sure is. Absolutely. Yeah. So – so it's just – it's been rough, and I'm not appreciating it, you know. But um, that being said, there's some good things going on. Like I've got uh, – I work with good people, and, you know, everyone in that department's like, really great to work with. So that's cool. Mm -hmm. That's fun. That's always That good. makes it good. That's good. Having a, yeah. having a healthy relationship with your coworkers, very important thing right now. 
Right. Oh my god, yeah. That's something For that I, I like to stress to everybody. <laughs> like, you don't have to be friends with your coworkers, but have a healthy relationship. <clears throat> if you're not happy, talk to each other. Yeah. Because you're about the only thing you have right now. <laughs> like, you know? Yeah. That's like, that's sort of the way you're I right. Yeah. You know? Like, I, you don't have a lot of social interact interactions, so deal with what you have, you know? Right. Yeah. And I will say, if my coworkers tune into this or watch this, I'm not just putting up with you because I have to. No, I promise. I truly love you. True. True. <laughs> truly. So. Truly. True. Truly. <laughs> Sponsor me. Coakley. <laughs> Dude, I don't have any beer right now. I, I drank it all, so it's all gone now. I'm so sad. I should have had it for this. We could have been beer buddies for a night. Bruh. Bruh. You, got, I mean, you just have to get these. You just, do you like I, mango? I do like mango. All right, I'll bring the mango-flavored one. <laughs> you can have them. Sweet. I do not like the mango ones. I like the original lemonade ones and the black cherry ones. Mm -hmm. Fucking delicious. The strawberry one's a little too pungent, a little too sour. The mango one is not for me. <laughs> I'm going to tell you right now, it's I... not fucking for me. It is not good. <laughs> he says as he takes another sip. Oh, this is this is the original. I get it. Oh, okay. I was about I mean, I like mangoes, but that doesn't necessarily mean it transfers over to the flavor no, it may mango. Not. It totally may not. It's always... Dude, no. it's a totally different thing. Yeah, well, the flavor is more so, like you know... if somebody like spit on a mango in a room nearby oh so like... god <laughs> it's kind of like how uh, LaCroix is you know they like make memes really about LaCroix explanation. <laughs> I, I feel like this is like LaCroix but fermented what you're describing you're almost nailing it that's almost spot the fuck on you got it that's it it's LaCroix but, but I got it. not fermented and with sh alcohol in it yeah you're not selling this to me very well no, at I'm all. Not, but you're you're buying it. <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna try it <laughs> one way or the other. Try it. <laughs> nice. No, it's it's good though. I like it. I like the lemonade ones. And the black cherry yeah. ones taste like uh, alcoholic uh, Coca Cola, cherry cola. Nice. Ooh, that's nice. That's good. Yeah. yeah. I think Coke is like the ultimate mixer when it comes to oh, alcohol. Oh, it absolutely so you can put... is. Yeah. Yeah. You can put basically anything into Coke, and mm -hmm. it tastes pretty good. Yeah. You know, at least pretty good. I mean, scotch, whiskey, bourbon. I mean, those are all whiskeys, whatever. But, like, any kind of whiskey. Rum, yeah, I guess you can't, vodka. You can't miss – I've never mixed vodka with it with good success. Oh, really? No. It, it lightens the color too much for me. It's, like, weird. Hmm. I think I might have done it when I was just – I just didn't have anything else. And I was like, well hmm. – I definitely did that. I definitely mixed vodka and Pepsi when I was, like, 18 and... Actually, I think I was, like, 16 and smuggling vodka into the fucking football games in high school. <laughs> That's to be completely clear. Nice. <laughs> nice. And you needed vodka so it wouldn't stink too much. Yeah, so, it, well, it was it was not only so it wouldn't stink too much, but so we could put it in water bottles. You guys are out there. Right. You know who you are. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all know exactly who the fuck I was with. <laughs> Shit, it was fucking hilarious. Wow, and then you see some like people passing this one water bottle around when they actually have water bottles themselves. You're like, hey, wait a minute. That ain't right. No, there was definitely a point where I was like, wait a minute, we're the only people in the crowd passing a fucking water bottle around. I was like, that's got to be pretty clearly an indicator that something's going on up here. I remember shortly after right. I was like, let's go, let's take that, let's take the alcohol and leave. Like, <laughs> yeah, that's pretty suspicious. I mean, that's pretty obvious. Yeah, yeah. it's good though. It's good shit. Mm -hmm. Good old, good old unadulterated uh, law breaking as a child. <laughs> unadulterated. <laughs> that would that would make sense. Unadulterated adult, you know. And it was uh, when I was a child. It makes you were sense. a child. Yeah. Do you know that. I'm gonna get another one. Apparently, blue raspberry is a real, like, it's a real thing. Yeah, they're real. That's a real fruit. Dude, I, I had never knew. I'm like, bro, that does not look real. Yeah. Yeah, it, it totally, they look, they're like neon colored by comparison right. to every they're, other they're fruit. Right, they're luminescent. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Just I watch. still have a hard time. When I see it on Google, I'm like, is this actually real? Like, is this is Google playing a trick on me right now? Because this doesn't look real. This like, looks like no, really. No, that's over. it. That's it. Like, that's it. like legit ripe blueberries also look unreal. They don't look like real. They they, they look like a weird fucking off color from space. I, it's unbelievable to me. Right. Yeah. Will just got out of a lesson. 
Will, if you're out there, oh, nice. just come on in, buddy. The water's fine. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you for being so well-dressed. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for having weird fucking dreams. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's really honestly. <laughs> I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think if I had any weird dreams lately. Oh, yeah, though. let's... I, let's I, dream diary. <clears throat> what do we got? Yeah, we haven't done that for a while. Um, oh, shoot, I ran into my ex in one of my dreams. In that's dream? awkward. That's, oh, man, that's awful. I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah. Well, I mean, it it's not terrible or anything. But, like, usually when you have, like, a feminine figure show up in your dream, it's like, it's, it's, a, it's like a representation of you and your feminine. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. So like your feminine aspects, but like there was two of her, and they were wearing like one was wearing blue, and the other one was wearing black. The blue one looked like really healthy and radiant and like joyful and happy and everything like that. But the one in black, like her, it looks like she had a, a meth addiction or something. Like her face was like real sagging, oh. and she was bitter. She was going on about something like you That's know griping scary. about something. <clears throat> yeah, it was a little weird. Um, and uh, heavy, bro. Oh yeah, um, so yeah, it was interesting. That's that was like, a good one. I guess. That feels like a scene out of a music video. Oh yeah, it could be, couldn't it? It could be, definitely could be. It could be. We could work with that. It could be. It could be some cool shit. I like that. Th this is the best thing about these uh, podcasts too, by the way, is that we always have some good idea that ends up coming out as a result of this thing, and like it's here forever. Like we can just go back and watch it again and figure it out. And like, just see this what the hell true. the idea was that we were like talking about and trying to figure out together. You know, mm -hmm. that's cool to show. Yeah, with me. and we can see the thought process go along into it. Yeah, yeah. So we can sort of arrive at the same conclusions without just needing to be like, okay, so why did we do that again? Like a right, good yeah. example of when that doesn't happen is <laughs> the new song that we're working on, which this right. is us telling you there's a new song we're working on <laughs> that we had an entire arrangement done for like everything was finished we played the song we were like yeah that's good it's like objectively this is gonna sound great we're gonna record it like this it's gonna be a fucking awesome arrangement and then we went into the pandemic and forgot everything we did that night it was <laughs> like the most fucking ridiculous thing ever if we could only have been live <laughs> like, I know. recording that. Had to of it. right yeah well we did we did get a picture of um we did of the board Scott did specifically. Yeah, the board. So thank you, Scott, for doing that. Yeah, that was fucking genius. Rad. I definitely would have forgot about it entirely. And think I, I did. I think I did. If, even if I did take a picture, I definitely forgot that I did. Oh yeah, I definitely. Yeah. Yeah. I, I didn't remember that recording anything. on your phone, and that's the only version of it that we have an arrangement for. So we could have figured it out from that. But. Mm -hmm. Oh my god. That I think that's terrible. the original one. I think that was the like the the thing before we like switched because we switched a bunch of sections around and like did, did a bunch of work with it. Oh, you're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. The recording we had was just the original version of it, wasn't it? Where it was just like straight yeah. through, everything was played, and then we just finished. Right. Yeah. I really like that song for that breakdown. The oh yeah, yeah. It's fucking heavy as fuck. Every time we hit that, I'm like. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm just saying that's a good drum solo part. Oh, it is. It really is. I want you to go ape shit when we go to record that. Like, honestly, just beat them fucking drums up like animal. Like, <laughs> yeah, like I was, I was listening to the the recording and I was like, oh man, this is a great section for this. I can work that out. Like, yeah, real nice. Yeah, yeah. You could, you could figure out something cool there. You could improvise that every night if you wanted to. That could be your fucking jam. You know what I mean? Yeah, if I would actually work on my chops a little bit, then. <laughs> I'd be able that's to how I feel, man. Every time I go into the studio and Scott, like, does his thing, I'm like, fuck, dude. If only I could have the focus to, like, sit down and fucking practice like that. Right. Dude, he's so <clears throat> good. <laughs> I know. Don't you just wonder that all the time? And you're yeah, just man. like, man, if only. <laughs> dude, he's just I, so talented. It's crazy. Yeah, I used to be that focused with practice. Like, I would go in, like, when I was in college, you know, I was studying for the, yeah. studying the degree. I would go into the, the practice room, and I'd be in there from, like, you know, 8 p.m. to midnight or 1, mm -hmm. just, you know, going over my whatever it was that I was practicing, right. like that or timpani or snare or whatever it was that I was working on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's like, I all younger, I did. I was the kid that would fall asleep, like, on the edge of my bed, like, learning how to play songs. Like, I had the laptop over here, and I would, like, I'd fall asleep at, like, or 11 o'clock at night on the edge of my bed guitar still in my hand like straight up like and i'd wake up in like at two in the morning or something like oh god 
Oh, I gotta go to sleep. <laughs> like put the thing yeah. down on the guitar stand, like curl up in bed and just fall asleep wherever I, thought, I was. Straight I thought you were gonna say you'd pick it up and start playing again. Yeah, man. Yeah, I was. I was one of those kids that like I really wanted to. I wanted to do it for like a lifetime. So I was like so into it, so focused. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, man. Yeah, it's like what happened to that? Where's that drive? Like now I'm 28, and it's like, <laughs> you know, the, the army took it, even... spit on it. <laughs> oh. See, I don't even have that excuse. Like, I can't even say that anything like that took it away. I'm just hit a uh, later year. Got you. Huh? College got you. <clears throat> Maybe. It's yeah. all the same. I mean, it's the same stressors. It's just for different reasons. I My suppose. life or death was life or death, and yours was, you know, financial freedom for the rest of your life. <laughs> like, <laughs> well, yeah, I shouldn't have studied music then. Right. Right. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's, yeah, that's true, right? Whoops. <laughs> Here we are. <laughs> Here we are. Yeah. yeah, no, straight up. That's like the thing, right? I always think about it. And I'm like, well, yeah, I sacrificed that. But it's like, fuck me. I guess it could be worse. Like, I'm privileged enough to be in a position I'm in, right? Yeah, and there. it's like, well, what else would you have done? You know, I mean, you could think of this, that, or the other right. thing. Like, I could have studied something oh, else and, and done something. constantly do that, right? They always do that. Right. Wait, what's that? They, and I said, and people constantly do that, right? Like, they always do that. They're like, well, what could have been? <laughs> like, if been? I would have just done yeah, that. Yeah, what if I... Yeah. Yeah, if I had done this, if I had done that. And it's like, why does that matter? You're, are you going to go back in time and enter some other, like, quantum universe and make that happen? Right. Is it even possible? You know? Oh, Dustin is in the comments here, and he says, I'm here now to type out my two-part question. All right, hit uh -oh. up, Dustin. What you got, yes. buddy? We got a two-parter. We got a two-parter. I love that shit. I'm excited about this. I wonder if it's about dreams. I don't know. That'd be cool. That'd be cool. That'd be cool. Yeah. Dustin actually hit me up earlier this week, and he said he had a couple questions for us that he wanted to ask us when we were uh, live streaming. So I, uh, I offered him the opportunity to come on in here and do it, just like anybody else can. Come on in here and ask a weird-ass question. I'm into it. It's not. Gonna yeah, be weird, weird questions. It's probably gonna be a interesting question. question. Any kind of question you want. Dustin. We talked about dinosaurs for that sake. The thing, so like. What's that? Dustin always has good questions is the thing. So like Oh yeah. Well I'm sure it's gonna be a doozy. He's gonna he's gonna hit us with some shit. He's gonna be like, What's the what is the flight velocity of an unladen sparrow? <laughs> like And then we'll have to specify. African or European? Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Damn, this is gonna be a Thank long ass question. Know. Gonna be like a, it's gonna be like a quantum physics question, like just be like a formula. He's gonna be like, part one, <laughs> <laughs> and part two is can you show your steps? <laughs> like, <laughs> show a proof. It's like, oh, are we helping you with a college class? Like, what is this? <laughs> hey, hey, did you ever um, have to write out proofs for anything? What is it say? In math. Writing a proof for in math. Proof in math. No. Oh, yeah. oh, oh, like the, the, the hypothesis things? Like the, yeah, yes. It's like where you, you have to prove that something is true, some yes. kind of, like, yes. yeah, yeah. it's like a column and you go down. Yes. Oh, God, those are, <sighs> those, 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 yeah, you just, I, I don't remember anything about that at all. You hit me with a whole thing just there where I was like, motherfucker, oh, I hated that whole block. <laughs> like, oh, oh. That was the oh. worst. I hate math, man. I'm bad at it. I'm really bad really? at it, truly. Really? Yeah, it's that's hilarious. Because right? you're like super techie. Yeah, I know. I, I know. That. I'm bad at math. I'm fucking faking it all the way. <laughs> <laughs> you only need to know two numbers, and one of them is not really even a number. So. <laughs> yeah, thankfully yeah, I didn't grow up in the time where an ass uh, like assembly code was a thing, because then I would have to know math. But yeah, I don't. I don't Oof. have to actually know that much math to do my job as a tech. Like I, I honestly, and this is the thing, right? Even like I think numbers in general fuck me up, because like I, mm -hmm. I've had problems even with like like, remembering numbers for, like, memory sticks. So, like, memory and computers has, like, different... They have different, like, uh, rates that they run at, like, different megahertz clock speeds that they're running at, or, like, different mm. sizes that they are. So you have a 6-gig stick or an 8-gig stick or... Actually, yeah, size matters. You could find a 6-gig stick to save your life, but you have, like, a 2 or 4 or an 8 or 16, whatever. So the thing is, though, is, like, I at a certain point in time, you had to, like, remember those. You had to know those numbers and shit. I never once in my life could remember that bullshit. To this day, mm -hmm. I still Google it. Like, I've been doing this for a decade, and I'm still Googling that nonsense. I'm like, what the fuck is it? ECC? Fucking which one fits in this goddamn thing? How does this work? Like, <laughs> and I'm sitting there like, what's the pin out on this? That kind of thing. Oh, we got a question. Oh, we got our question. 
Uh, oh, I got friends on too. Hello, Sharon. Hi, Stephanie. Welcome to the hello. show. We sit here and talk about whatever we feel like talking about in that moment. So you're in for quite a ride. Yeah, we have we're no in plan. For a ride. Uh, so Dustin's we're in for question here. is here. He said, uh, "What was the project that got you into being bands in general? In, into being in bands in general? Uh, and what project are you not necessarily proud to be a part of?" Reason for those questions is I was <laughs> thinking back to my time equate with Vern <laughs> when we recorded in the bathroom of where we lived. Uh, I don't think that there's an, a project that I'm not proud to have been a part of. I actually, I actually think I have enjoyed every musical project I've ever worked on, good, bad, or ugly. I think that I probably learned something from it, and that's why I've enjoyed all of them in some way, shape, or another. Now, I've had some weird experiences as a result of doing musical fucking stuff, but that said, that's not the same thing as not liking it all, overall. Like, it was a good experience. Um, but the project that got me into being in bands, um, like, my... I don't know... You'll have to clarify. Do you mean like a personal project or like the band that I listen to or like what's what's that? But I, I like I guess... listened to Green Day and saw them play live at the Bullet in a Bible thing, that like DVD that came out when that was like a big deal. And I remember seeing them live and just being like, that's fucking crazy. And that coupled with another experience where like they had these people come through the fucking school system with these uh, yo-yos. And the yo-yos were like this big deal. Like they called a kid on stage and like gave him a yo-yo and they looked, told him how to do a trick or whatever. We're going on stage like, showing a awesome. yo-yo trick off. And somebody like started clapping and like cheering because it was fucking cool. And I just remember that being the coolest fucking experience bar none. I was like, whoa, <laughs> I entertained somebody just now. That was neat. And that was like a thing for me. I was like, whoa. So that's like this, those whoa, two whoa. together. Yeah. It was in that moment you were on stage and you flipped that yo-yo. You did the thing and your brain just went, whoa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I, got the, I got the drugs. The drugs hit my brain. You know what I mean? Like, whoa. it was fucking crazy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think um, for me... I know the project that got me involved. It was fifth grade band in elementary school. So I remember in fourth grade, we were sitting in there, and they handed out a paper, like, you're going to be in the band. What would you like to play? And, like, I don't remember choosing to be in band. I don't remember that at all. <laughs> but I remember getting the paper that asked me what instrument. And as I was looking at this paper, a, a picture flashed in my mind of the, the fifth grade band that I saw before and the fact that the guy playing the drum was in the back. And you didn't have to like push any buttons or anything, so I saw, I was like, oh that sounds good, <laughs> and that that was it. That's amazing. And then, I, yeah, like it was literally the most thoughtless thing I've ever done in my life. <laughs> oh, <I> hit stuff. <laughs> wow, that guy was in the back. No one's paying attention to him. That sounds perfect. Yes, let's oh, do it. That's great. And I thought it looked easy. Um, <laughs> and then um, then I remember t telling my parents about it. You know, because I was just a kid. You know, I was like, I want to play the drums. And my mom's like, well, are you, are, are you sure? Maybe you'd want to play the, the trumpet? And I'm like, no, I want to play the drums. <laughs> <laughs> I want to so, bang a gong. You know, <laughs> yes. No, but I've, I can't remember a time that I've not been proud to... I mean, I can think of times that I've been part of projects that I wasn't, like, super... What's up, Dylan? What up, Dylan? Um that I wasn't, like, super invested in, that I was just kind of there because it was maybe a paycheck or maybe it was just, like, I'm doing a favor for somebody. I don't know, something like that, because I did so many little... Because I went to college. I went to Shepherd uh, for music. And so when you're a music major, you, and I was one of those, I just wanted to do everything. You know, I was I was jumping into all kinds of ensembles. And, like, I would play for people's senior recitals. Like, if they had a jazz thing and they needed a drummer for it, I'd volunteer for that. Or if they were a composition guy and they wrote some crazy, weird like, avant-garde piece for, like, a little ensemble that involves a xylophone, and I, you know, so I play for that. You know, just anything. <laughs> you know, jazz band, wind ensemble, marching band, drum corps, all kinds of things. But the least proud, there was, I was in the percussion ensemble this one semester, and we played the worst concert I've ever been involved in. It was horrible. And actually, and I know that, it's objective because my professor at the time actually said this is probably the worst thing I've ever been a part of. <laughs> <laughs> it, was just, <laughs> it was the spring That's semester amazing. my freshman year. And uh, it wasn't the percussion ensemble in general. It was just this one concert was just so bad. We weren't prepared for it. We played badly, but performed badly. There was, like, not many people in the audience. There was, like, 20 or 30 people maybe. Oh, that's always so, the worst. Oh, dude, it is the worst. So... We finish up, and what makes it worse is that I was in more of the pieces than anybody else. Like, I spent the mo highest percentage of time on stage. And so it just happened that I was on the stage the most, 
it was the worst concert by by the word of someone that I like really admired and was learning from and you know was also like giving me a grade for stuff. <laughs> That's and so then, funny. That's so funny, dude. No. Yeah. Here's what makes it worse. Here's what makes it so much worse. We finished up, and you know, when you finish that kind of thing, there's like, it's like there's this whole um, way you have to do a concert when you're in, in an environment like that. Like when you do a classical, if, if you're listening to like an orchestra or something, you don't clap between movements, and then, you know, at the end of it, you're probably going to stand up. Like, it, like, I don't know why, it just seems to happen at all of the decent concerts. Mm-hmm. It's not even like that great of a concert, but some, like, one person stands up, and everyone else is like, oh, yeah, I got to stand up now. So, it, this happened at this concert, and it was horrible. It's like, you know, it's kind of like if you you're walking down the sidewalk How? and like a pile How of, could it of have shit gone on this the, poorly. Like, right? It's like uh, there's a pile of shit on the sidewalk, and you slip on the shit, you land in the shit, you're sitting there in shit, and then someone over there starts clapping and saying, man, that was great looking. And it convinces you to pick the shit up and put it in your pocket and take it the fuck home. <laughs> that's that's exactly. how deep that went. <laughs> yeah. It's deep enough for my pocket, I guess. Um, but, like, yeah, so, so we finish up. We go out to, like, take our bows. You have to bend over long enough to say, did I tie my shoes? Yes, I tied my shoes. <laughs> and, and we do that, and, like... They're clapping because they're obligated to, even though it's terrible. As is. Yeah. And then one, this one cheeky bastard stood up. I'm like, I hate your guts, sir. I don't like you. You're such a douche. So he stood up, and everyone else stands up, and I'm just like, like sitting there basking in embarrassment as they That's applaud hilarious. us for our That's utter hilarious. failure. But the good news like, is you didn't oh. write it, but you, did you, did you perform well? Did you perform the piece as well? Did I? Yeah. No. <laughs> Funnier. Holy fuck. <laughs> no, it was not good. None of it was like, good. I was like, the only thing that can make it better is if you did well, man. And you're like, nope. <laughs> not a no. fucking chance. Nope, I did poorly too. <laughs> that's amazing. I love it. Dude, that's the greatest thing I've ever heard. <laughs> great punchline. Excellent. I wouldn't even mean to do that. That's fucking great. <laughs> Hey man, organic content is the best stuff. Holy shit, that was hilarious. Yeah. I honestly, I expected you to be like, yeah, you know, you know what, I did all right. I did all right. <laughs> we the group overall. We just did the. Nope. Nope. Like, yeah, it's a weird composition, <laughs> but I made it through. Like, nope. <laughs> nope. <laughs> nope. I, I even barely did that. <laughs> Holy shit, that's really funny. There was, there was one that I saw, um, and it was actually. So this guy that wrote it is actually really like he he's written a whole lot of really great stuff yeah, and he's had he's he's got a band like you know how you get like you know a band's EP and sometimes you listen to it and you're like okay this is like okay yeah, yeah. um he's one of the ones that like he gave me his band's EP and I still listen to it even though he gave it to me like over 5 years ago Dude I honestly can we can we swoon a little bit for all the fucking awesome local bands that are around cuz holy shit I have a lot of albums like that since we started doing this as a band like yeah. And that surprises the shit out of me because it's not like it used to be. Like, it used to be like people would give you albums and you'd put it in and you're like, okay, whatever. Fucking ah. Yeah. But, like, objectively, I listen to some of the albums of our, of our friends still. Like, I, I will turn them on. Like, they're in my playlist. Like, we have some fucking yeah. awesomely talented musicians <laughs> around here. Um, yeah, there's some good stuff out there, yeah. man. Yeah, man. That's some fucking cool shit. Um, we have a playlist on our Spotify if you want to check that out, just to plug that at the moment since we're talking about it anyway. Fucking plug check it. this shit out. It's a playlist of all of our friends out there. Yeah, plug that shit in. Plug this shit in. It's got all of our friends, all of our, our pals that are from around the area. Um, new, old. Some are still doing their thing. Some are not. Please get out there and just take a listen. Yeah. We should probably throw the link up. That'd be smart, but I don't have it readily available. So. I don't also don't. I'll start um, to pull that up. <clears throat> yeah, let's I keep can, talking. I can, <laughs> I can get it. I can do that. I got it. I got it here. Actually, if you Google Spotify okay. once revealed now, we come right up. Holy shit. That's cool. Nice. Woo. That's... That was neat. I have not seen that yet. Oh, there I is. love how much you're all saying neat. I enjoy that word. Do you like that word? Good. It's a great word. I'm glad you do. I'm, I'm sure somebody out there is like, dude, fuck you for saying that. 
Dylan said, how's things going, guys? <laughs> it's going, man. It's going. Here's the playlist of, uh, of us and all of our friends. It's, uh, it's Once Revealed and Friends. It has uh, some of our music, some of our friends' music. Get in there and listen to it. It's good stuff. It's good stuff. Good band. And we'll have another song on there in about a month. <laughs> oh, yes, we will. <laughs> it's coming and... right down the pipeline. Yeah, man. I like that song a lot, the one we're about to come out with. Yeah, I just dude, enjoy that. Too. Absolutely, me too. <clears throat> I'm very dude, excited. Like, I know this word is only meant for like other kinds of music, but I think it really slaps. No, no, it can slap. I mean, it can slap. Yeah, Anything can slap. It, it really. slaps. I can, yeah, I can't think of a better word for it. I was listening to oh. listening to Mel Torme's "Coming Home Baby" the other day, and that that slaps, man. That slaps. It slaps. I just remember what I was about to talk about. What's that? Hit me. So, all right. So this guy wrote this thing. And this guy is a very, very out-of-the-box type of thinker. Okay. And, um, if I remember correctly, has synesthesia. Okay, so he, the sees, uh, he sees sound, right? Or has some sort of mix-up. Yeah, of there's a senses. color affiliation yeah. with the notes. Yeah. There's a color association with things. Well, anyway, so this particular piece was more like an art piece, not so much a music piece. Okay. But it showed, like, a video of a bunch of, like, destructive things happening, I think. I, I, I may get some details wrong, but there was that, and there was a tarp on the ground. And <laughs> this guy stood there. He had no shirt. He was wearing a Teletubbies head. And he started painting himself red. And then there was some other music going on. Uh, I forget what people were playing because I was... Too distracted by the man with the Teletubby head on. Yeah, that would have distracted me immediately. As soon as you said it, I was like, what? <laughs> like, Right, and then the guy who wrote it started handing out apples. And that was that was, what? that was what it was. I don't remember the other details of it because I was really distracted by the Teletubby head. It was pretty wild. And I think everyone left that, that recital really confused. I would have left... The most confused, probably. That's really weird. What? He did yeah. what? What a very avant-garde thing to do. It is very avant-garde, and, and he wanted people to be confused, I think. Okay. That's or uh, uncomfortable or something like that. Like, he was going for that effect. Like, he, he was obviously aware of the fact that this is fucking weird. I mean, I understand. All right, so hear me out. Yes. I don't want to offend anybody. I don't want to get on Just the wrong it. side of anyone. I appreciate art in that manner but I do not understand for who you are doing it for really because mm. at a certain point when you're doing avant-garde things that are like meant to shock the person who's being subjected to it are you doing it for them or are you doing it for you and that's my only question for this because I don't know if I think that you're doing it for you or them. I don't know who you're doing it for at that point. That's a weird decision. <laughs> Sorry, where I stand on that. <laughs> this one, I wrote this song for you. Now I'm going to play a song that's only for me. Yeah, I don't... <laughs> Think about it. You know what I mean? I just It's strange well, to me. It's a weird thing. I understand mm -hmm. the artistic side of it. I understand mm -hmm. that there's like an artistic value behind everything. Maybe there was mm. some symbolism to that that you didn't know, that we don't know now, that that would mm -hmm. that would give us some context maybe that we don't know. And that's that's on us. But in this moment, I'm going to be honest, you didn't make the symbolism very obvious, and that's problematic if you're trying to make a statement. Symbolism should have some yeah. sort of notion that like makes sense, you know what I mean? A guy painted red right. as a Teletubby, right? What's up? So there's a guy as a Teletubby, right? Mm -hmm. Tell Toby Head, he started painting, he had a paint roller and red paint, and he was painting himself. Okay, and he's painting right. himself red, right? Yeah. Now that, I'm sure there's symbolism to that, because the color red is obviously... The apples, right? Apples were yeah. red. Were they red apples? I, yeah, they were. They I've were red apples. i feeling it has something to do with socialism. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm going out on a limb and throwing socialism in, in the ring. How do you feel about that? It might. It might. Oh, I remember going up to him afterwards, and I was like, "Man, that thing was just so crazy! Like it, it, it just didn't make any sense." I bet you he went and home he that like, night. And he was like, "He doesn't fucking get it, man." No, 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 no. Here's what he said to me. He said, "That was the point." 
I was like, alright, man. Well, you nailed Who it. Who is this guy? Can we have him on the podcast? Oh, he's great. I love this man. Like, he's a, he's a great person. He sounds great. I want to ask him questions about this. I want to interview him about this fucking random art piece he did in college fucking, like, ten years ago or Bro, whatever. He'll, he'll probably be incredible to have on this, because he's a... He, I've, I've always gotten the impression that he's very well thought out. Yeah. And, like, I mean, he's written some really good stuff. Oh, yeah, absolutely. You know, this is, I'm sure. Yeah. He sounds like an artist. This, well, honestly, this, like, that's, yeah. that's an artist artistic thing to do. That's really... Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and, um... No, I've asked myself that same kind of question. I had that same kind of thought process about, like, very avant-garde type of music. And my thoughts and feelings about that have changed significantly same. since I was in college. Yeah. Because, like, in the culture of uh, music college depending on who you talk to. There's a, a faction of people who basically music was great up until about 1900, and then, well, we don't talk about that. Yeah. Um, right. There's some people who feel that way, and that's fine. There's some people who, like, eat up everything that's avant-garde and, you know, talks about how great it is and stuff. There's people who have a more balanced view who are like, you know, I, I appreciate all this for what it is and yada, yada. Sure, sure. When I was, when I was in college, I was sort of starting to get like enamored with the idea of avant-garde music mm -hmm. rather than the music itself. Um, that being said, there's like artists like Xenakis who like they he uses advanced mathematics to write his music, and it's really super interesting. That's you know, pretty that's, cool. that's, legit, that's legitimately cool, and it conveys meaning. There's an emotional effect when you listen to it, you yeah. know, especially if you're kind of sensitive to it. But then there's other stuff. I was listening. There's something called – it's by a guy named George Crumb, and it's called uh, Voices of Ancient Children or Ancient Voices of Children or something like that. Okay. And I'm sitting here listening to it because they happen to have this record at the record store. And I was like, oh, that's neat. I remember hearing about this piece. Let's listen to it. So I listened to it. And I'm like, bro, what is what even is happening with this? Like, nothing's happening. It was a lot of silence. And, eventually, and it'd be like, silence, silence. And then... Like, stuff like that, you know? What? Right. And I'm like, okay, maybe I need to, like, just put on headphones and close my eyes and only listen to this, and maybe I'll have some kind of effect from this. But I was like, okay, so what's happening you gotta go that is essentially... Far, right? You're looking for meaning now. Like, you're right. Like, you're you have to look. It, it's... It. You're taking ideas and just taking the ideas really far. Like, where's the heart and all of that? This is where I feel like the modern art critics have the same thing as the avant-garde critics, right? Mm. The avant-garde music yeah. critics. Because, like, I feel like they look at paint splatters on a fucking canvas and they're mm -hmm. like, this truly conveys the emotional aggression of the artist. And I'm just like, I don't fucking know that. They could have jerked off before they did that. Like, I mean, I, like you don't know what the fuck they were up to two seconds before they jumped up and threw fucking paint at a goddamn wall. It could have been nothing. It could have, it could have literally been, they could have walked in the room and been like, bam, million dollars. What the fuck are you going to do about it? Like, you know what I mean? Like, there's no thought yeah. at all. Yeah, and, you know, there's a lot of music like that, too. Uh, I remember my professor talking about this guy at, at another college, you know, and about the same kind of idea, that sometimes people just take it too far. It's like they're trying to make something that so strongly defies aesthetic, you know, practices that it ends up becoming just meaningless. And you're this like particular digging, professor... You're digging for it. You need it. And you're like, right. need a meaning. You're like hunting so hard for that meaning that it's... You're like, it's in there. I know it's in... Somebody created this. There's got to be a reason for it. But maybe there's not. Maybe there's really fucking like, not a reason. Yeah. And the thing is, all these, these um, musical pieces are kind of based on just like ideas about music you take these ideas to their furthest philosophical end and then you compose something based on the idea rather than the other way because it's such a like music is such an emotive it's a uh, um it's emotive it's like um uh, organically expressive yeah, and it's yeah, rooted yeah. very deeply somehow and i, I want to figure this out in some intricate like intimate relationship between uh, mathematics and and language and its ability to convey not just some kind of meaning but an experience and that's something that a language can't really do you can experience right. something happening 
but ideas conveyed by language don't convey an experience. And that's something that music actually can deliver on. And I, it's like some interplay between a linguistic role playing with the fundamental um, building blocks of the universe itself. You know? Yeah, that's absolutely... Yeah, no, I, I don't think you're wrong about that. I think that, like, the thing, too, like, with uh, with humans in general, like, we have all these things that are built upon our recognition of, like, tonality mm -hmm. and frequency and rhythm and things like that. But that's probably a big mm -hmm. part of the reason why we act and function the way we do. You know, it probably has something to do with um, rhythm and frequency, especially, like, sound frequency and how we... Oh, yeah. Things. I mean, technically, everything's based on frequency, right? Like, we see things based on light frequency. Like, we see the mm -hmm. colors of things based on the frequency of light. So, like, we hear things based on the frequency of that tonality and that frequency of the sound, right? And so that means mm -hmm. that everything is based on these mathematic functions. Like, that's, that's yeah. where I always go back to is, like, there's always these mathematic functions that, that run these things. And you're like, okay, I hear a high-pitched sound, so I know it's above this frequency. You know what I mean? Or right, I know right. it's in this frequency. People that are really good at, like, identifying frequencies. Like, I had this conversation with, uh, with Donnie, the guy who masters our music. He, um, he actually told me that he's getting to the point where he's, he can, like, recognize a, a, a tone. You know, he knows where a frequency right. is. So you can just jump in there and just cut it out real quick. And he's like, okay, that's, that's good now. That was around, like, the 3200 range, and I just got it because I knew mm -hmm. where it was. You know what I mean? And it's, like, those sort of things wow. that you just learn over time. So that means humans are, are adept at that, for one. But it means we're attuned to it, too. That means that if anybody's mm -hmm. capable of it, that people are capable of doing it really, really, really well. And that means that it's just in there for some reason. It's part of us, you know? So I think you're right. Yeah. I think it has something to do with that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I'm reading this book now, and it's it's about it, it's not like a it, it's more like a hold on my cat's crying at the door. Let me let him. Sorry, it's all right. Jeez, come on. This is your friendly reminder uh, to go check us out on Spotify. I just threw one of our Spotify playlists in the comment. Check out our uh, playlist there. Our Say hello on. to the world, Chief. Oh, hey, Say kitty, kitty. Chief. His How full you name. Doing, buddy? Is Master Chief Tomahawk the Babs Maximilian Bidzinski Sr. I love it. Good name. Yeah. You call him Chief, though, because that's a lot to say every time. You know, if you're yelling at him. Not wrong. That's the Master Chief, gentlemen. That's John 117 right there. Yeah. Master Chief Tomahawk the Babs Maximilian Bidzinski Sr. It's like the uh, Viking Inflatable Philly Arm 2 band. That's a thick boy. <laughs> thick boy. He jumped up and said, I need a weapon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But yeah, um, so like, yeah, like we we experienced, oh yeah, I was reading this book and it's talking about how music theory kind of developed, yep. like describing wavelengths and ratios and everything, and it comes down to ratios and, you know, the musical scale, it's like just based off of uh, the building up of different kinds of ratios stacking up on top of each other and you create a seven note scale. Right, that's scale how you build it. chords, right? Like that's, that's, chords are all about the harmony and dissonance between the notes and the harmony and dissonance is all based on the ratio of the frequencies between Right. right. And I'll even show you. I'm, I'm not getting naked, or am I? No, he is. Oh. He's stripping. Fucking. Yeah. But Seriously. like, if you look at my arm, this. Hold on. It'd be easier if I just did like this. Yeah. So. There we go. This shows yeah, the so... harmony and distance between frequencies right here. Well, this is mostly harmony because what this is is the uh, like first three partials of the harmonic series. Well, well the distance we'll would be the, the space between any two of them. Well, it would be if the waves have a complex ratio. Right, right. So if you have like a, a 7 to 8 ratio, for example. Yeah, it just generally means it doesn't match up like almost anywhere or if anywhere right. at it all. It doesn't line yeah. up. So like like the, the whole one and then there's a half, there's a wave that goes yeah. through half of the wave. Like a 1 to 2 ratio, no, no, no. so it's a simple ratio. Oh, did you yep. spill beer everywhere? No, 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 it's empty. Oh, good. <laughs> but then there's a... There's also, it's divided into thirds, so then you have a three-to-one ratio, and then a four-to-one ratio, and these particular ones, like the way they stack up, they they are consonant. Right, right. Um, so, like, yeah, so, like, here's an interesting thing I didn't know before until, like, two nights ago. Um, when Pythagoras was figuring out the seven-note scale, I think it was Pythagoras, um, but he, he figured out, like, the ratios of, of consonant pitches in the first place. Um, he's credited with that, at least in the Western world. So, if uh, he, so when he stacked up his particular ratios up to get to seven, mm -hmm. the reason he did that is because they knew of seven celestial bodies. Because he had the sun, the earth, or I'm sorry, the sun and the moon, and well, at the time, guessed. well, five planets they had. Well, they he knew just of. guessed. Yeah. 
because he figured seven was a good number, I guess. But he took this ratio pattern and stacked it up. Now, in India, their scales, they have more notes than that in their scale, more than seven. They have quarter tones, and that's based if you follow that same pattern because the ratios, you know, the, the wavelengths are, you know, squishing yeah, down yeah, and down. Yeah. So they actually, I know this. I know so, this. Yes. So I wonder if that's because, like, I feel they like knew about more planets, and they were like, oh, we can go up to nine with this. Sweet. Possibly. You know? Possibly. It might have something to do right. with the number of gods and goddesses they recognize, too. That could be something to look at. How many gods yeah. did they recognize in Pythagoras' religion at the time? Oh, yeah, the Greek gods, I guess. That's a bunch of them. Right. But, yeah. I'm so then, yeah. how many were, like, legitimately considered, like, the gods, though. You know what I mean? Like, those are the ones we know of, the ones that we have planets named after and shit. Right, yeah. I'm just curious, yeah. you know, what the connection there could be. Hold on one second. I gotta yeah. run into the bathroom. Take the reins for just a minute. Um, oh, here's cool. a Here's a note for you to talk about. Pastrami. Oh, pastrami? I like pastrami. Um, <laughs> it's good. <clears throat> I haven't had pastrami for a long time. We started buying it when I was a teenager, and I'd make these epic sandwiches that involve like two to three kinds of lunch meat, two to three kinds of cheese, along with mayonnaise and possibly mustard, uh, and pickles that my dad made, homemade pickles, bread and butter, and tomato. And if I had other stuff like lettuce, I'd put that on there, all on potato bread. Oh, my God, dude. Those sandwiches are so good. All right, well, that's pastrami. Um, as far as these wavelengths and everything goes, it's wildly interesting to me um, because there's there's this fundamental relationship as you get closer and closer to the fundamental about how these things are in, interrelated. You haven't had pastrami for a long time? I think they have that Firehouse subs, actually. It's expensive, but I think they have a pastrami sub. It might be the New York Steamer. I'm not sure. <clears throat> but I did want to tell a story about the castrati, and that's what I was going to talk about, but Vernon heard pastrami the first time, so that's pastrami. Um, but I want to wait till he gets back to talk about that because it's so much fun. Oh, and there he is. Oh, he's not back yet. So here's a fun thing. So if you take ratio like polyrhythms on rhythms, right? Because if you set, essentially, if you take a frequency like a wavelength, like what I've got on my arm here, and you, you <clears throat> measure the number of waves per second in hertz. So the lowest one that we can hear and perceive as a pitch is like 20 hertz or something. Right? So that means there's 20 wiggles of the air in one second. Right. Slower than that. Alcohol. I made a mistake. Hey, what's up? Really back. Pastrami sounds good as shit, though, doesn't it? I saw, I saw that when I wrote it down in the notes earlier. We never talked about it. I was like, damn it, we need to talk about pastrami. Oh, yeah, we do. And then I would mix it up with wavelengths while I was at it. You did what? I mixed it up with wavelengths while I was at it. And uh, I saw this really cool video that I want to tell you about, and I'll show it to you. This guy, Adam Neely, does, like, music theory stuff. Yeah, I love he it. Did this yeah, thing. he's great. Oh, yeah, he did one where he takes rhythms, like a... a, a uh, a 3 over 5 over 1 polyrhythm, right? And it has this weird sound to it. And he speeds it up and speeds it up and speeds it up, and as he speeds up this rhythm, it just clicks, right? It becomes pitches and becomes a consonant triad because it's essentially uh, the same thing that's happening. That's cool. You have, because rhythms, like a 5 over 7 polyrhythm, is just another ratio, Right? The same as a consonant couple of uh, wavelengths, you know, at, at like a 5 to 7 ratio are going to have like a, or maybe a 3 to 5 ratio or whatever it is. The wavelengths having that, it makes it consonant, like a consonant pitch. And if you speed it really fast, it creates those waves. It creates the pitches. It's the same thing. Rhythm Whoa. is just pitch slowed down to where you can perceive it as individual Hittings against that your eardrum. That makes a lot of sense. No, that makes tons oh, right? of sense. When you consider that all <coughs> all electronic signal is when it's recorded, it turns out to just be these blips against zero and plus or minus yeah. one for the the actual movement of a of a wavelength. That's insane to think about. That rhythm itself is the same thing. Like I am in fact creating a frequency here by doing yeah. this. What is that affecting? What is this? What is the wavelength doing? You know what I mean? Like, what's that? Right. So, like, if I do like a four over three polyrhythm, which is a ba ba da ba ba da ba ba da ba da, 
if I could, if I was able to speed that up so my right hand was playing like 30 times in one second, yeah, you probably hear some kind of pitch relationship between these two things. That makes a lot of sense. Really because does. of the way it makes the air wiggle, I guess. Yeah. You know? No, I like that. That's cool as shit. We gotta we gotta play with that. We should we should work that into music. We should work that into a once revealed song. <laughs> what this polyrhythm and then figure out what the two notes are, the relationship and like have it play have that speed it up till we hit that point where it starts creating tonality and then just make that like the intro or outro to a song or something. Yes. We could have like I could play like a, a, a rhythmic pattern, right? And get a clip of it like two bars long. Yep. And then just speed it up by like crazy amounts. Yep. Yep. And it becomes the opening chord of the song and then we Yep, right again. into it. See, look at that. We just wrote apart. Another idea. We just that wrote apart verbally. So nerdy and beautiful. I it's love great. it. It would be great. It'd be fucking great. It'd be gravy. We'll work the uh we'll work the golden ratio into it and make it really good. Oh yeah. That sounds good. Yeah. I've got some ideas for where we should go with this next album after this first one. Because this first one, we're basically done. We're basically... That's that's a fun announcement to make. We're basically done everything that's going to go on the first album. In the sense of having the, the songs having written songs, and ready. For. Yeah, they're done. Yeah. There's two tracks yeah. that are open right now. We have songs that are floating around that might make it in there. But that's, that's where we're at. That's where we're at. Everything's done. We just got to pick what's going to go in there. And they're going to be the two that get fed in. We finish those up. But yeah, we're we gotta start thinking about the next one, and I think we should go real artsy on the next one, just for fucking shits and giggles, man. I think it'd be a lot of fun. I would love that. I would love that, like do a concept album kind of thing. Yeah, man. Yeah, I think it'd be. I think, I think it'd why be not? good. Why not? Yeah. That'd be badass. A lot of it is that I've been working on a lot of this like video game music and stuff, and like composing for for games now, and like it's got me in this like weird. I'm like I'm willing to experiment with anything if it sounds good. You know what I mean? Like, I wrote some yeah, orchestral stuff that I'm, like, actually quite proud of. Like, I think it's cool and sounds really good. I'm just, you know, I gotta mm -hmm. finalize it and fucking get better sounding VSTs or make the fucking MIDI sound okay. But, you know, it sounds good. I like it. You know what I mean? And it's a lot of fun to write yeah. stuff like that. I think we should incorporate things like that. It'd be good. Good thing to do. Mm -hmm. For real, man. I'm, I'm, I'm very much into that. Yeah, we've talked about doing stuff like that before. We wanted to, like, we wanted to put stuff in different songs before... But we just haven't done it yet. So I want that to be like a focus the next time we write a whole album. You know what I mean? Like I want that to be like a yeah. thing. I feel like that'd be... You want to hear about the castrati? Oh, hit me with the castrati. We never hit that. Rhymes with pastrami. Yeah. Right there. So we talked about pastrami. Pastrami's out good. Of the way. Castrati think... is where we're headed now. Castrati. And it's totally... It has to do with meat, but in a completely different way. Does it? Okay. Right. That's scary. It, yeah, it, it is scary. It's really bad for boys born in the 1600s. Oh, God. So, yeah. All right, so... Oh, I was just... wait. I know what this is. Yeah, you do. As soon as so... I started to write, type it, I was like, wait, I know what this is. Uh... So, in the Baroque era is when this happened. It now, broke, it was, uh, don't between... fix it. <laughs> between, like, the 16-somethings and the 17-somethings... They had this practice where sacred music was hot. That was the thing. That was the thing to get involved with, because the church was paying for that kind of thing. Right. So you could make some money the as a church. Church has music. money, man. They got fucking and, money. They still do. It's different these days in in some ways, but yes, very much. It's very money driven. But, um, so choirs were a big thing. And if your, like, kid was part of the choir, that was a big deal, right? Especially if they're really good, you know? And so you have these, like, superstar child singers, right? And, you know, when boys sing, it, it, it was always boys and men in the churches, you know? So all those soprano parts, those really high-pitched kind of soprano female parts typically, they were, you know, boys would sing in that register. Right. Okay, well, you have the superstar boy singer, right? And then they turn, like, 12, or 13, or whatever. Lost that they voice. Hit, they lose the voice. So. They go from baby, 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 ooh. Yep. <laughs> Much like yep, Justin they drop Bieber. It down. They drop the bass. Ooh. Um, well, I guess oh, it's the parents something. who do this. They drop something. 
well, these boys are not allowed to drop anything, and they make sure of it. Well, so yeah, the they, well, they drop them for them, <laughs> proverbially. Uh, to the ground. Yeah. Happy birthday to the ground. <laughs> um, because of. they would castrate them. Yep. And so they would keep their boyish, high-pitched voices. And uh, this was they, they were known as the castrati. They were a bunch of ballless uh, boys and men because they were great singers. That's insane. So if they knew what was good for them, they'd, you know, choose to play drums instead. Just saying. It's crazy that they so did that, thing. though. Like, that they were like, we got to have these voices. The voices are more right. important than their happiness or their balls. we got to fucking get rid of them. we got to stop them. From... It... Who figured that out, by the way? Who was like, man, did you hear about Steve? Steve lost his balls and his fucking voice never got deeper. Isn't that fucking nuts? And then they just started doing that. They were like, whoa, hang on. That's fucking hey, that's... crazy. We should start using that. <laughs> like, that you're on to something here, buddy. You're, you're... <laughs> this is good. This is good. Steve, no, it's no, real don't... unfortunate, but Steve, I think you might fucking be on to something. <laughs> <laughs> Here's another implication. I just thought of this. Here's another one. It was so important that it was boys or men who had these soprano parts that they went to the lengths of cutting off their balls instead of having women come in. Instead of just getting women. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Frankly, like, I, I don't even know if that's misogynistic at that point. It's just, like, self-deprecating. <laughs> you idiots are just mad at yourselves for not being able to do it when you grow up. <laughs> you know, I'm going to hack my, my balls off so I can do this forever. <laughs> like, yeah. awful. Appar so apparently, and here's another fun fact, um, castrati were yeah. sought after as, like, ex like lovers for women because they would, like, last longer, I guess. Oh, my, of course they would. I mean... Right? And they can't impregnate them, right? There's no fucking testes. They're not. It's not. It doesn't work. It doesn't work, but it does enough to be useful. Oh man, I keep seeing this thing where um, there's this. <laughs> they don't know which way it's gonna go. If it'll be physical or chemical, but they believe that early age castration is gonna be the solution to a lot of. <laughs> societal problems for Ooh. males <laughs> just just early age castration or a reversible castration of some sort of chemical castration of sorts they're, they're like that's right. probably the answer to solve a lot of societal issues because they're like there's like this aggressive male thing and then there's also this this uh like like pseudo uh worry that there's no way to stop men from being fucking horrible rapists so it's like maybe that's an answer i saw it and i was like damn that's fucking I mean, if you can pull it off where or, it's reversible, fucking whatever, I'm probably in. <laughs> or to keep it, like, uh, keep the population down, you know, that's... Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I mean, think of it, if it was normalized to just be castrated, people would just be castrated, yeah. right? Yeah, or get, like, a vasectomy at birth, right. so you can have kids later on if you want. Right. But, I guess uh, you gotta worry about doctors can... not being fucking shitheads, because they still, they fuck up, like, uh, circumcision still, so it's very definitely <laughs> possible they could just fuck that up, too. Man. Isn't that crazy? That's rough. We're like thousands of years deep and they're fucking up that. <laughs> <laughs> it's in the Bible. Sort of like, they've been doing dude. that long. I, like, I understand that it's like people see it as like gen genital mutilation now of, uh, of infants, but like I also understand that it's like, again, it's a tradition that's been around for like 2,000 years. One of those things is like it's going to take a while to get rid of one way or the other, but it's like, man, can right. we not fuck it up anymore? Could we like maybe just get that right? That seems like at least we could do that. Could we? Yeah, could we focus the next two thousand years on making sure that one's done correctly? <laughs> 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 if we're gonna do it, can we do it right? <laughs> can we figure out a way to do it correctly, safely, at least humanely, we could just be possible? left with an ethical question instead of like the possibility of like a cleft dick, you know? Yeah. Right, like whatever it is. I just, it's just. Yeah, let's figure out a way to do that right, maybe. <laughs> mm. I also had uh, on our list of things to talk about were D and D alignments, and we have about like two minutes or so left, or something like that. Oh so, man, yeah, that's good timing. I think that's good. Let's let's hit that up real quick. Uh, I'm gonna the say quickest. right off the top. I, I think Scott is is neutral, neutral good. I think he's neutral good. Yeah, I, I wouldn't describe him quite lawful. He's not lawful good. Scott's not a not Scott's not a lawful good. Uh, not not that he's broken the law, FBI man. No, no but he's been around me, and I have. So. <laughs> he hasn't turned me in yet, okay. so here we are. <laughs> There's that, yeah. So what would chaotic good be like? Chaotic good is like, you do good things, but you do good things specifically if they benefit you. So like, uh, think... Um, mm -hmm. Think the governor, who doesn't really break the law, but he finds a way to manipulate it to his end. 
He changes the law when he needs to. Mm. That's actually more like lawful evil, really. But that sounds yeah. I was thinking that because he could do some terrible things that yeah, way. Yeah, that's more like lawful. It depends on what you do with it, really. And that's really the thing with alignments is it comes down to what you do with it. I yeah. I feel like you you fall under like a lawful neutral, which is like almost the opposite, but not really. It's more of like just on the scale away from like the the true good side. I see like the lawful mm. neutral in you because you like you're wiser than to know that like all things can be good or bad. You know what I mean? Like you don't. Yeah, mm. That's not you. I don't see that. You're, you're wise, dude. You understand that things don't things aren't good or bad. They just are. That's just how they, they just are. are. Yeah. It's just it is. Yeah. Yeah. I see that. I see that. And then like mm. will will I've always seen as like a either like a like a, a neutral good or 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 a lawful neutral type of person too. Like I feel like you guys are very much similar in that aspect like i feel like you guys yeah you both see things from that same aspect of like they just are things just are yeah mm-hmm. yeah the that only thing that, that leads me away from the lawful side is that you guys aren't afraid to bend the law when necessary that's the only thing yeah like so. i heard a really great way to approach that kind of situation it's yeah. uh here's a rule never follow stupid rules bingo bingo because there's yeah. always been stupid rules right always yeah. What about you? Um, I don't. I don't know where I fall. I don't. I don't know where I'm at on that. I've always. I feel like it's hard. To, it's hard to self-diagnose that. Yeah, I've always let other people sort of figure that out for me, but I. Yeah. I feel like most people describe me as either truly neutral, which is not good. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a good thing. Being true neutral is not a good thing. Or I've also subscribed to chaotic neutral, but I'm not quite there because I don't just walk around the streets setting things on fire even though I want to. <laughs> so maybe lawful neutral. I don't know. I somewhere in there. I I just I true neutral is probably the closest thing, but chaotic neutral if I was on a bad day. <laughs> I see. <laughs> yeah. Really kicking over trap can for fun. Yeah, I mean, so I don't do things like that, and that's where I'm like I'm not chaotic neutral. But I guess it if it doesn't. If, if it doesn't suit me, I don't have to. And that's the thing with Chaotic Neutral. When I play characters in D&D, I always pick Chaotic Neutral because I always see it as... It's not just a cop-out because I don't feel like fucking figuring out what my alignment is, but it's also because you can pretty much get away with whatever the fuck you want. I mean, truly. You can do anything you want. Pretty much. I mean, I, I played as a sorcerer once who was mostly a pyromancer, so I was mostly just Ooh. doing fire magic. And so I we were in a bar... The bar was covered in darkness. There was a dinosaur running around in the darkness, and I lit the bar on fire. They were like, why? I was like, I don't fucking know. Why not? And that was my <laughs> answer. And they were like, that's good enough, I guess. God damn it. Like, we'll it's take perfect. it. And the bar was perfect. on fire, and that's what I did. <laughs> so, okay, so what is a lawful neutral again? Like, why would it, so where, where does lawful play into that? Lawful would be that you, you're willing to follow the law so long as the law doesn't hurt other people. That's mm. usually what lawful good and lawful neutral people seem to believe. Gotcha. Yeah. Because lawful okay. neutral, again, you could swing evil if you needed to. That's like that's like if the if the axe came to grind, you would truly pick up a sword and go to battle for the things that you believe in versus the things that they believe in. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Gotcha. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, that's yeah, more neutral. Because a lawful person in general kind of sees the point of the law. Yeah, as they'll being always follow the jurisdiction of justice is the thing, right? <clears throat> yeah, yeah. 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 The it. logic of justice even is the thing, right? The logic of there's somebody who is at fault and somebody who is not in almost every altercation. That's the idea of law. Right, and we have to have that system in order to provide, like, a livable society true for everybody. And that's and true society to other people, yeah. That's exactly right. Yeah. 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 And, and where if I it's working against them, it's believe that most lawful. of the time, but I'm also like, yeah. eh, wouldn't it be fun if we didn't? <laughs> and that's where I get that chaotic neutral thing. <laughs> Wouldn't it be I mean, we could exciting follow the law, but we also though? we could also not follow the law. Yeah. I mean, yeah, exactly. Just saying. Yeah, we can do whatever we want. You can do whatever you want. You can do whatever you want. If you wanted to own that thing, you could own that thing. It's just you better be willing to take it from them. <laughs> so does that mean that the Libertarian Party is chaotic neutral? Uh, the Libertarian Party is generally chaotic neutral, or even neutral evil, which is something we haven't talked about. And neutral evil is like, that's like, neutral evil is pretty bad. Neutral evil is pretty, pretty evil. They, they kind of just do whatever they want, but 
then the other half of it is that they always have the aim of I'm going to benefit myself. And that's where libertarians always feel. And that's where I don't mm. agree with them most of the time. Because to be neutral evil or to be some form of evil is just not good in society. It's not a good thing to do. And I understand that yeah. evil is always necessary. We have to evils in the world to, to promote goods. But uh, not when it's the Boogaloo guys. <laughs> I don't need the Boogaloo boys <laughs> being evil. That's not good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, you guys need to reel it the fuck in real quick. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. We've went over by about five minutes. We could keep going if we wanted to, but it's been the once revealed variety hour. That's um, it has been the once revealed is, variety hour. We hour. covered castration, pastrami, uh, personality. Yep. Talked about a dream. We did. We did. We talked about dreams. I think at one point we talked about alcohol. I we did. Like that somewhere was in there, we we may have talked about uh, our musical experiences early on, and perhaps even later. We did. That was in there. Ooh. We've got that was some, a good one. That was very, quite the variety. We've got a lot of variety going on in that one. Uh, yeah. Join us next week uh, where we learn to unicycle with bears. Uh, thank you all for being so well-dressed. We've been once revealed.